Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. I just want to be. I just want to be. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith the Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus Starting from last Sunday, we began to see that curses are real. And we said that the curses are negative patterns or occurrences that are noticeable within particular families or communities. We saw that last week. We said that curses were negative patterns or occurrences that are noticeable within particular families or communities and secondly we said that curses are negative bloodline transfers possibly from disastrous parental transactions with the enemy things that have been transferred to children and children's children by transactions of grandfathers thirdly we said that curses are limiting or disempowering forces of ancestral or generational connection they are limiting or disempowering forces. We saw the reality of the curse in the life of Abraham. In Jacob's life as well. Then we saw the widow of Nain. And of course I think we saw also Jabez which we looked at in the scripture. For the breaking of curses we saw five channels. Number one was the blood of Jesus. That because of the blood of Jesus we are delivered from every curse. Number two, the revelation of the truth. That you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you know what Jesus did for you on the cross of Calvary, then your freedom can be guaranteed. Then thirdly, we saw the force of prayer and fasting. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. That was Matthew 17 and verse 21. Then we saw Isaiah and all those scriptures that we said the force of prayer and fasting. Then we saw the power of the blessing. We said when the blessing is in operation, it is like turning on light. And when you turn on the light, the darkness must disappear without any confrontation. So we have the power of the blessing. And finally, the prophetic mantle. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. We looked at all that last Sunday. Today, want to find out what it takes to maintain your deliverance. Receiving deliverance, and please, I want to beg everyone in this assembly this morning. I do not want anyone stepping out, and we shall be true shortly, until the grace is shared. To avoid any form of distraction, please ushers help me to take note until the grace is shared. And we'll do that very shortly. Receiving deliverance is one thing. But maintaining deliverance is another thing altogether. It has been observed that many get delivered at one point or the other but not many remain delivered I am aware that there are some people who get healed in church and some before they even reach their houses the affliction returned already what happened why should that be I remember a man that was delivered from in the ministry of A.A. A. Allen from the spirit of addiction to alcohol. Many years after Allen had died, the evangelist A.A. A. Allen, many years after he had gone, the man was back in his drunkenness. And he met an evangelist and he said, 
Many years ago, I was delivered from the, from the addiction of alcohol. He said, now I am back to it. Is there no other person around that is an, as anointed as Allen that can set me free? Where is that kind of anointing? So, we have seen people who have been delivered at one point or the other, at one time or the other, and it appeared as if the affliction returned. What do you do to maintain, not only to get delivered, but to remain delivered? There is a general rule, and I'll read that in Isaiah chapter 51 verse 1. Isaiah 51 verse 1. He said, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look to the rock whence ye are hewn, hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence you are digged. Verse 2. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Look to the rock. That is, look to the rock where you came out from. Look to the hole. What does that mean? If you remember how you came out, you can continue to remain out. If only you remember how you came out. It says, Refer to the, to the hole from where you came out. Refer to the pit out of where you were delivered. If you, if you remember how you came out, you can continue to remain out. That's a general rule. Whatever you did to get delivered, you must continue to do to remain delivered. Whatever you did to get delivered, you must continue to do or even increase in it to remain delivered. Whatever you did to get delivered, you must continue to do to remain delivered. If God's speaking to anybody here, say it loud, Amen. I gave you, we gave five points earlier on that can be keys to deliverance. And you can refer to that. But specifically, let me mention five things that a person must do to remain delivered. You know in medicine, there is something that is called a start dose and then a maintenance dose. For example, somebody is, 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 is prone to epilepsy or convulsion or something like that. And then they gave a start dose to break that convulsion on the spot. The start dose is all, all, always a mega dose. And after that start dose, there's something is called a maintenance dose. This maintenance dose is not necessarily to arrest an immediate attack. But to prevent a subsequent attack. Am I communicating? To maintain the person where they start or the mega, the one that, that attacked the, 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 the matter. Where that one stopped, this one maintained the situation. That is how it is. So there is, there is what you do to get delivered and there is what you do to remain delivered. Now, what do you do to remain out? Number one, remain in the Lord. Remain in uprightness. Ecclesiastes 10, 8. He said, he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh an hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Two things to note here. First, if you break the hedge, the serpent will bite. So you remain in uprightness. You don't break your hedge. You don't break your protective shield. Secondly, Isaiah chapter 54 verse 14. He said, in righteousness 
shall thou be established. Thou shall be far from oppression. What does that mean? You can be far. That's our second point. You can be far from oppression only if you are established in righteousness. You can be far from oppression only you, if you are established in righteousness. Until you are established in righteousness, you cannot escape affliction, oppression. I was at the Area 1 church office about four days ago and I met a young man who was delivered in one of the services. He had a neck collar at that time that I think he went to India and so on and so forth but all of a sudden, bam! The power of God hit him and he was healed on the spot on that altar. So he met me a few days ago and he told me, he said, I have come back for you to pray for me because the affliction returned. The affliction returned. So I told him, maybe that was the word of knowledge or whatever. I told him on the spot, why should the affliction return? Did you go back to the world? He said, yes sir, I did. But I am back now. I want to rededicate myself to God. Am I communicating? He that breaketh the hedge. Spent over it. One day they brought a man. They traveled about five hours journey. And brought him. The wife drove him. The wife stopped on the road. Five times. To pour water on his body. Because he was dying. They brought him all the way about five hours drive to Abuja many years ago in the Rawan church. When they brought him, they carried him. He was like a skeleton dressed with skin. I lifted him in my hand like a baby, pulled him to my chest. He was dying of AIDS, HIV. I said, Lord, heal him, Lord. He was somebody I knew before. Lord, heal him, deliver him. I prayed my heart out. And as I did, I planted him on the ground. He stood on his feet. Someone that was carried that he stopped five times on the road to pour water. He left on his feet to the car. Two weeks later, he drove himself to my house. He said, I came to show you myself. I said, wow. Wow. Are you the one driving? I'm the one. And he remained healed. Later on, he fell sick again. I prayed for him. He was healed. He fell sick again. I prayed for him. Now, don't feel too bad. Finally, he died. I felt very bad. I was not myself for almost six months. I said, Lord, if you didn't want him to leave, why was he healed at first? Six months later, the wife came to me. And the wife said, she needed to tell me something so that I don't feel too bad. I said, what is it? Said, the husband said, every time you prayed for him, he was healed. He returned back to sin. Then the affliction returned. Then he was healed. Strong enough. Went back to sin. He said it happened six times. Then at the sixth time. He told God. I am sorry. For all this up and down. Just forgive me now and take me so that I don't remain and fall back and die in it and go to hell. So God heard him. He received peace of received total forgiveness. 
felt pure, was very happy and told his wife, I got to go now so I don't miss heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? He that breaketh the hedge, the serpent will bite. I've seen people delivered from poverty and from wretchedness. Got money suddenly. As the money arrived, so arrived alcohol. Arrived multiple women. Arrived this. Arrived that. They are not able to even drop a dime to help a poor person or a dime for the work of God. No. He's finally free from poverty. He can live anyhow. And the devil said, I will show you. And his nose dive back to square one. That will never be your portion. Remain in the Lord. Number two, walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the revelation that brought you liberty. For you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. He said in the book of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 5. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 5. He said, O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Notice this. One, two things. A, two A. Darkness can only return when light grows dim. Darkness can only return when light has grown dim. That is the truth of the matter. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the living, mercies of the living God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, only acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be renewed by the transform. Be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Second point to note here is revelation is what sustains liberation. It sustains liberation. Hallelujah. Let me, this is what I mean. If you ever got a revelation from the scripture that guaranteed you divine health, you must keep walking in that revelation and recharging yourself in it if you ever got a revelation that brought you supernatural supply or delivered you from the power of witchcraft or nightmares you continue to recharge am i communicating that is why you recharge car batteries to remain the truth of the matter is your eating of yesterday cannot handle the hunger of tomorrow am i communicating so in the university you got a revelation bam that said jesus carried your your your, your, your sickness and you can't be sick and for 20 something years you graduated you have not checked that scripture or related scripture anymore and you expect to maintain health no sir the enemy goes to and fro, to and fro, from Job to Job, Job to Job. So what do you do? You refresh. How many of you know what it means to refresh the computer? To refresh the iPhone or the iPad? You refresh your light. You refresh. You refresh your light. To just be sure that the revelation that delivered you is still awake. And if it is getting slack, you connect with brighter light to guarantee your liberty. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Lift up your right and say, Father, I receive the grace to walk in the light.
people like Kenneth Copeland who started studying the Bible maybe around when we were born. They are still studying the Bible volum voluminously till today. People like Bishop David Oedipo, they are still seeing fresh light till today. Yours sincerely is looking at scripture till today. Before I came here this morning, I read scripture that has nothing to do with what I'm preaching. That has to do with my personal survivor. Am I communicating? Is there any old man in your village that has eaten enough not to need food again? I said they want to kill the man. They said this man is 95 years old. For 90 something years he has been eating food. His own is enough. They shouldn't give him food again. Is there anything like that? Except there is a plan to kill the man. That is how the spiritual journey is. The tape that charged you up. Listen to that tape again. The CD that did something in your life. Listen to it again. There are tapes you can listen to until the tape dies. There are CDs you listen to until it breaks. You look for another one. And since they are new every morning, every time you listen to it, something new happens to you. That is how to maintain your deliverance. You, you walk in the light. You keep on walking in the light. That was number two. Number three is maintain spiritual intensity. Maintain spiritual intensity. I am talking about spiritual intensity, spiritual wakefulness. They are necessary to sustain liberty and to keep the enemy at bay. Spiritual intensity, spiritual wakefulness. Romans chapter 12 verse 11 said, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. How many of you know that it is possible for flies to play on top of a stove under what condition? Eh? When the stove is off and maybe there is soup on top of it, some soup or stew or something just spilled on it and the stove is now not on. Is disconnected or there is uh, it's not connected to the gas and the multiple flies are feasting on the stove whose destiny is heat but is now cold the flies are playing but I ha have another question now when the stove is hot is it possible for a fly to say he dreamt that he was that he was on top of a stove that in his dream he saw himself playing on top of hot stove that is suicidal dream never it's a nightmare someone say loud amen that is how it is on your spiritual journey there is a level of spiritual temperature you will maintain that certain afflictions are impossible. Set a level of spiritual temperature you will maintain. And you must take note of these two things I'm going to say. In the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 25. He said, while men slept. Now a certain man sowed or planted his field. But while men slept, his enemy came. And so tears. Number one or three A. The enemy plants, plants, P L A N T S, plants evil when men sleep. When people sleep, evil is planted. The enemy plants evil when people sleep. The season of spiritual slumbering. 
is a season of high enemy activity. That's the first thing. Second, spiritual emptiness facilitates demonic oppression. Emptiness. Spiritual emptiness facilitates demonic oppression. In fact, demonic repossession and re-entry. If you look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45, Matthew 12, 43 to 45, say, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, when a person has been delivered, set free from something, that unclean spirit is walking through dry places, seeking rest, and he findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from where I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then go at it and take it to himself, seven other spirits. The man is empty. The man is empty. No, no fire, no word, no prayer, no fasting, no worship. Everything is all carnality. He has been set free, but he is empty. And then the devil returns in a greater, more terrible, worse than the beginning. Am I communicating? Spiritual emptiness facilitates demonic oppression, repossession, re-entry. So you must, you must maintain spiritual fire. I've told you this story many times. When I went to Kenya, the wildlife park in Kenya, the, the tour guide told us, he said, every once, once in a while, a lion within a particular domain will charge. <laughs> and it will be heard like six to eight kilometers radius. And I asked, what is the lion charging for? Did anybody offend it? No. What is he charging about? The maintenance of territory. He's charging to take charge. He is charging to remind every dingo and every jackal and every fox and every hyena and every tiger that I am still here. You need to let the demons of your family know that you are still on fire for God. You need to let the witches and the wizards to know that you are still on fire for God. You need to know the, let the power of darkness know that you are well and alive. Somebody shout power! Every time around you seem quiet, declare a charge. A charge, a charge, a charge, a charge. Where the atmosphere look a bit timid, somehow just declare a charging session. One day fast, half a day fast, 24 hour fast, just to charge and take charge. Somebody shout power! So you have, you maintain a consecration at fast. Not that you are looking for money, not that anything happened that is, or you even dreamt any bad dream, but you are just charging to take charge, to just let the enemy know that you are well, you are alive, and you are equal to the task. Woo! Can somebody charge for one minute? Charge! Kabalaya, like a peda hala, like a la faratasi, ike beda managala yata sata, shata kala, leke teki ke pero da ya. Hey! Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. I will round off. In a moment, remain in the Lord, walk in the light, recharge your fire. 
Maybe somebody need to live here today and ask yourself, as I am in health now, what revelation am I walking in to guarantee I remain in health? You look for it. I can't die before my time. What is the scripture that guarantee me that? You look for it. I, I am not a wasteable material by any witch. What, what light of scripture gave you that conviction? Look for it and recharge your lantern. Refuel your lights. Refire your fires. Reignite your ignition. Refuel your fuel. Ay, 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 ay. You recharge your charge. Is somebody here? Shout the loudest. Amen. Don't live by assumption. I cannot say, I can't die before my time. And they say, why can't you die before my time? Your time said, I know no devil can do me anything. No, no, it's not, it's not like that. No devil, even though there are no, people that are like that, no, but no devil can do me anything. No, no way. Yes, no devil can do you any, anything. Why? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. He said, We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man that is the death that should have died me before my time he died it <laughs> he didn't only carry my sin and my sickness he carried my premature death he tasted death he died at the age of 33 and a half. Is that, a, is, that an, is that old age? <laughs> it tasted. So, so you identified such kind of scriptures that on the basis of this, I must fulfill my days. On the basis of this, I must be in health. On the basis of so and so, I I will never be a beggar, a pauper, a borrower on the basis of this and this and this. And you walk in the light of it. Hallelujah. What is our number for the soul? And then you maintain spiritual intensity. Number four, I'll be true in a moment. Number four, live in the blessing. Live in the blessing. Live inside the blessing. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to the last. If you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, observe to do all his commandments, all these blessings shall come upon you. When you reach verse 13 and verse 14, by the time you finish from verse 14 and you start going to verse 15. If you, if you go as, if you, if you, if you don't hearken to my voice, then all these causes will come upon you. You will notice that the blessing is the antidote of the curse. Like the anti-snake venom. When the snake bites a person, you give him the anti-snake venom. ASV, to neutralize that toxin. In the same manner, the blessing is the curse neutralizer. Anything now, take note of this now. To live in the blessing is to live beyond the the encroachment of the curse to live in the blessing is to live beyond the encroachment of the curse beyond the encroachment of the adversary secondly if you do the things that keep you in the blessing you are kept out of curses if you do those things that keep you in the blessing you are kept out of curses so if you want to stop struggling with the matter of curses just determine to live in the blessing i said the second thing already if you do the thing that keep you in the blessing you are kept out of curses and can I ask a question as if we're in a class? What can make a person to, to live inside a blessing? 
Anybody? It's not an exam. Anything you say is okay. All right. So people are saying many things now. No, the first one is if you hack in diligently, we just read it now. Obedience to divine instruction keeps you in the blessing. Am I communicating? Then somebody said righteousness just now. Thou will bless the righteous. Psalm 12, verse 5. With favor, you will surround him about as with a shield. So if somebody lives upright, then the blessing, he must live in the blessing. Then he mentioned covenant practice. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse and prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing. Am I communicating? So there are several things that you walk in that positions you in the blessing and keeps you out of the curse. Even the prophetic coverage, which I'm going to come to shortly. On this wise shall the priest bless the people. The Lord bless you and keep you. Numbers chapter 6 from verse 23 all the way to verse 26. These are things that keep you in the blessing. Is God speaking to anybody at all? Service to God. You shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve. So, identify the things that make you blessed. You escape the curse. And, and there are messages we have, we have preached in this place. Things like provoking the blessing. Walking in the blessing of God and so on and so forth. You listen to those kind of things and practice them doggedly. Listen, as I stand preaching to you, serving God with every dime of energy I possess, ask him, he will tell you. With every trace of every dime of, of resource he has given me. Living in his, in obedience to his word. I am not afraid of an ancestral curse. A generational curse, a witchcraft curse, an occultic curse. They never born that witch. Or, or the occult. Or the power of ancestral altar. Why? You walk in the things that guarantee the blessing. You escape the curse. You walk in the light. You don't need to curse the darkness. No one say amen. Has God spoken to you? Say amen. That was number four. It is live in the blessing. And finally, remain under, under prophetic covering remain under prophetic covering Hosea 12 13 and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved Remain under prophetic covering. Take note of two things. The prophetic mantle that terminates your captivity is the same mantle that sustains your liberty. The prophetic mantle that terminates your captivity is the mantle that sustains your liberty. He said by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. That is end of captivity. By a prophet he was preserved. That liberty was preserved by the same mantle. You know that when blind Bartimaeus was healed of Jesus. In Mark chapter 10 verse 52. The Bible said he followed Jesus in the way. He followed Jesus in the way. He received his sight. He did not disappear. He followed Jesus. Some people think that church is supermarket. I came I received fruit of the womb. I received miracle job. I received this and that. It doesn't happen that way. He followed Jesus in the way. If the mantle terminated your captivity, it is the same mantle that will sustain your liberty. Finally, second point, to remain under the mantle is to triumph 
over the battle. To remain under the mantle is to triumph over the battle. Any battle that pass your power cannot pass the power of the mantle that you are under. To remain under the mantle is to triumph over the battle. Do these things, these five things, and do them consciously. Remain in the Lord. Remain in uprightness. Walk in the light. Maintain spiritual intensity. Live in the blessing. Remain under prophetic covering. And your deliverance will not only arrive, but your deliverance will remain. Someone say a loud amen. Lift up your right hand everywhere you are and give him the praise for his word to you this morning. Worship him. Once again, in a short while we shall share the grace, but until then, I'm not expecting any movement outward. Lift your right hand and appreciate him for his word you have just received today.